This video is about one factor that can make or break your productivity when you're working either alone or with a team using Trello or any system like Trello. Hello, I'm Shane from Active Growth and a lot of questions came in when I made my first tutorial on how to use Trello to become more productive. And many of those questions can be answered with this one factor I wanna talk about today. That one factor is board velocity. So if we look at a Trello board right here, the key to working with Trello is that we process that things move through a process. We want stuff to move through this board from left to right until it reaches done, which means that we dump stuff into the first column, it gets processed and we move it into the next column. It gets processed either by ourselves or by someone else and moves to the next stage. It gets prioritized. It goes on our to-do list. It goes and then finally it reaches the end of the board at some point. And Board velocity is the speed at which stuff moves through your board. What I have loaded here is the personal productivity board that I set up in my first tutorial, but this is true for any board. Whether you're working on your own personal projects or you're working with a whole team, what matters is that you have a process where stuff moves from left to right and stuff is sorted in order of priority from top to bottom in the different lists. And there has to be a certain speed, a certain momentum at which stuff moves through this board because a stagnating slow board will kill your productivity. And a lot of this is psychological, right? If you're basically looking at the same board every day and nothing ever moves, it doesn't feel like you're getting anything done. And that makes you basically, it, doesn't motivate you to get stuff done. It, it gives you the feeling that you can't actually get stuff done. It gives you the feeling of being stuck. So this is a large psychological factor. There's a huge difference between working on a board that has good velocity where stuff is moving or working on a board that is stagnating. Now, what does this mean? That means that this board velocity thing is also the answer to a lot of questions I got about what goes in a card and what goes on a board. So, the question is, you know, do you have a separate board for each project, a separate board for each client? Is one client one card? How do you do this? And the answer is it should be determined by board velocity. So I want to choose a task size that makes sure stuff keeps moving. So let me give you two examples, right? If I have a single card here, that's a project that says redesign and rebuild entire website and it's a big website. Even if we break this down into milestones and checklists and stuff, which is good, this can give us some sense of progression, right? As we, as we complete tasks here, we get some sense of progression. But if we have a task of this size, and let's say it goes into priority or it goes into today, right? it goes into in progress, basically, this is going to be here probably for weeks, right? Rebuilding and redesigning a whole website, probably a multi-week project. So that's just going to be stuck there. And every day you're grinding through parts of this task. So that is too large of a project for one card. And what I would do is I would break this down into chunks and make sure that you have individual cards for this project. And you could, for example, use a label, right? Hover, hit L to assign a label. So you could assign this a label that identifies it as this project, the website rebuilding project. And you have individual cards where each card has a number of tasks in it that, are, that make logical sense together and that can be completed in one day or less. And that way you can move stuff through the board. On the other hand, the other extreme is if we have a single card here where the task is add a featured image to the blog post. Well, how long does that take? It's like 30 seconds, right? Open the blog post, upload an image, done. But that's too much for a single card because then you're just, even though that would make you know, if all your tasks are this small, then everything moves quickly, but you'll have thousands of tasks and it'll create chaos. So this size of task belongs in one card along with other checklists. So the card might be finish this blog post and one of the checklist items is upload a featured image. So this is basically what you want to keep in mind for deciding the size of, of the project that is represented by one card. Like I said before, I try to aim for one card should take a day or less to finish so it can keep moving through the board.
There's also a power-up you can use to assist you in this. So if you go to the menu here, there are so-called power-ups, which are like add-ons for Trello. You can search here for aging, card aging here. And what this power-up will do is it will create an effect that basically the older, the longer your a card has been stuck in the same place and hasn't been moved or processed, the more it'll start looking like it's aging, it kind of gets crumpled up and rusty. And this gives you a visual representation of whether stuff is going stale on your board or not. So this is a power up you can activate and use to make this immediately visible, right? What's stuck on your board and what's moving. Keep in mind that on the free version of Trello, you can only have one power up per board. So if there's something else that's more important for you to use, then you'll use that or you have to upgrade to use more than one. So that is the principle of board velocity. And that's the one thing that I recommend you go and do right now is basically go and look at your board and look at what is the size of these tasks. Any task that has either been stuck somewhere for a very long time, break it into smaller tasks. And any task that you see that is too big or too small, either consolidate them or break them apart. This is something that takes a bit of practice, but you will get used to it. Right? If you work with Trello, if you work with this system and you keep card velocity in mind, then after a while it basically comes naturally to you because you know what size of task will take how long to move, right? So after a while you basically barely have to think about this anymore and you'll just kind of get a feeling for the size of task to put in a single card. All right, I hope that helps you become even more productive with Trello. And as always, if you have questions about this, if there are other tutorials or other things you'd like to see, tutorials on how to do with Trello, just leave a comment below and I will happily keep making these tutorials as long as they keep being useful for you.